Hi, my name's The Ship. You join me today at Larford Lakes, and as you can probably tell by this brute, I'm on the specimen lake, and I'm gonna show you a few little tips on how to fish a short method. Gonna run you through the gear that I'm actually using here at Larford Lakes today. First of which, I've got our 10 foot Sapira rod, absolutely bang on for what I'm doing. I'm only underarming a method feeder and I'm catching big carp, it can handle it. And it can also handle if you're going F1 fishing or if you're catching smaller carp, it's perfect for both situations. I've got eight pound sinking feeder line. Like I said before, all my method feeder things I do, be positive, nice strong line. You know, it takes a lot of wear and tear. Getting down to the business end, I'm using a big 30 gram feeder this is a big water, it's 20 old acres. I'm not messing about with a little, you know, I'm not trying to catch a few F1s, I'm trying to catch big carp. So I've got a large method on, ICS feeder, absolutely bang on. I've got a quick change bead there, as you can see, and I've got down to the hook length, I've got 019 power line, like I said, I'm not messing around, and I've got a size 14 KKM hook. So absolutely bang on for air rig. I'm air rigging, I'm gonna go in between bandoms and eight mil pellets. But I'll run you through now what I've been doing. One, to get these big carp in my peg, and two, how to get them on the hook. The feeding, what I've actually done, I used to come to Laura for the lot years ago, and when the wind gets on these lakes, it's a nightmare. And it's not just the wind, it's the actual undertow, and you really struggle to fish the pole sometimes. I remember a match, I was actually over on the other bank, and it was blowing a hooli, and like I said, it was actually going through like a train. The, the undertow was unbelievable. And I thought, well, what do I do? What do I do? It's the only thing I can do. And I thought, I'm going to be really positive. I mixed up four kilos of ground bait. I put some corn in the mix, some hemp in the mix, a bit of everything, to be honest. And I was, I was actually next to Darren Cox. And he's like, what are you doing, Des? And I'm like, well, I'm going to try some up. And I actually threw in, I would say, probably threw in 15 balls of ground bait. Not rock hard. They were quite loose because I just wanted to make a big area on the bottom. And I was just thinking to myself, all these carp are going to come in, and not just carp, and bream, sort of graze all over that area, and I chucked my method feeder in it. And I absolutely blitzed the section. I can't remember what way I had, because it was quite a few years ago. And it sort of created a bit of a thing after it. A lot of people were doing it. And that's what I've done today, and it's unbelievable. Some of the carp you get, it's such good fun. You know, whether you're a match angler or whether you're going pleasure fishing, you can be really, really positive. Stick a load of bait in, chuck a method feeder over it, and you can catch absolute massive carp. I've chucked about two kilos of ground bait in, which probably ended up with about 10 big balls. They were soft, like I said, I didn't want them to go down as a ball, I wanted them to break up. So I'm just going in. I've got an 8mm pellet on it, but I've had a couple on 8mm pellet, I've had a few on white bandoms, I'm just swapping around. Sometimes I get a bite on an eight mil pellet, sometimes I put a bright bait on and they're on it immediately. But what I've done, I've got some two mils here. I've got my ground bait there, which is bream feeder and green F1. As you can probably see from that, I've got a bit of hemp in there, a few pellets. Like I said, you can stick anything you want in it really. But I've got a 50-50 mix on of ground bait and micro pellets. So I'll just stick my eight mil pellet in, fill me mould up, Crush that in. Give that a good squeeze. So it's the same principle as if I was fishing out long. I'm not going to do anything different. And it's literally just an underarm. I'm probably fishing about two rod lengths out. It looks crazy. But believe me, it catches some fish. So I've recast my method or underarm my method out to where I'm fishing. And as soon as that method's landed, I've got a ball of the, the mix that I'm putting around my method and chucked it as near as I can to where that method went in. And you can see I'm getting liners now. So I've chucked out, chucked that little ball on the top of it. I've reset my clutch so it's really light. Literally, I can pull it off really, really easy. That's really important. And I'm getting a few liners. They, you know, they've rocked in. The thing is, they're not stupid, these big carp. You've got to wait for them. Not, I think sort of 
between five and ten minutes if we don't get a bite i want to bring it back in reload me method and do it again but you can see you might be able to see from me tip i'm getting quite a few liners i'm not sure if there might be a few bream there as well i haven't really caught any bream but you never know there might be a few skimmers there but put your hands on your lap and wait what you don't want to be doing is striking at them sort of bites you want to make sure that when you know when it's a bite it's on i'm not striking it liners like I say, look at them liners. You know, there's great big, massive, probably, you know, there, there's carp in here at over 25 pound, I think. And we've had them today to about 14. So just sit there with your hands on your lap. Be patient. But there is a time when you have to bring it back in and have a recast. And I think it's between five and 10 minutes. Well, I've, I've probably had it there for about five or seven minutes, something like that. I've had a few liners. So I'm going to bring it back in now because I feel like I could have got, I could have had a bite. So I'm going to wind that in, re, redo the feeder. Just do that same. Load it right up with bait. I've got my little ball there again, ready to go. So I'm just going to plonk this out, just a little underarm cast like that and then as that feeder goes in i then chuck that ball as close as i can to it and i'm making that ball the ball i'm chucking in i'm making it rock hard like i'm putting it around the method just to try and get them fish to think well yeah we got away with that ball it's like having two methods on the bottom but one of them's one of them's obviously got your hook bait in and the other one's just a feed so I'll just tighten that down just so there's a little tiny angle in the tip and sit there nice and patient make a ball up again i'm making a ball up now for the next cast quite hard just a one-handed ball like that 50 50 ground bait in micros and that's ready now for the next cast i'm getting mold ready half fill that ready to go for the next cast Sometimes it's really hectic. Sometimes you've got to be patient. I've been here before and I've caught big weights of bream doing this. It's not just carp. You can you can go to different venues as long as you're like, look at that for a liner. You know, I think that's a liner. <laughs> yeah, it, is, it was a liner. I mean, that's probably, I know it was a big carp, I think, with a liner like that. But there, there's no point striking at it. You want to make sure it goes round and it's literally taking your clutch. Look at that. There we go, that's on. Not a real fierce bite either, that one, to be honest. So I'm just taking the back wind off now, rejesting my clutch. I don't want to be playing the fish on the clutch, really. It wasn't a real fierce bite. I thought it might have been a skimmer, actually, the way that went, man. Oh, dear, that's an angry fish. And they're not really belting off today. Like I said, some days, you know, they take your tip round and they scream off into the middle of the lake. But it doesn't matter if you've got your clutch set nice and light. Oh, that feels like a big fish, that. Just plodding about. Oh, dear me. You've got to go careful, because actually, when they're real big fish like that, they'll actually do your up length on the nod. So just be aware, and that's the important thing of having a nice little soft rod. You know, there's no point fishing like a 12-foot rod there. These little 10-foot rods are absolutely perfect for this sort of fishing. They come into their own, to be honest. It's a pleasure to catch fish on them. It makes it easier to net. You know, there's no point. I'm not fishing out very far. Just got to go a bit careful that they don't sort of wake up. Look at that piece. So enjoyable. Really enjoy this sort of fishing. Oh, look at that. <laughs> that is a beaut. Oh, dear me. I'm going to have to stand up for this one. Oh. And that's why this sort of fishing works for these big fish. You imagine trying to catch these on the pole. Oh, dear me. You know, you've got no problems. You can let them run. You can feed. And the nice thing about it is, these fish are crafty. You know, you can come here and 
if you were on the pole today and you fed that amount of bait, you'd probably foul up loads. Doing it this way, everyone's in the mouth. I'm gonna try and hold this up. I would have thought he's about 16 pounds, this fish. Well, there you go. <laughs> There's proof of the pudding. Probably a 16 pound Larford Common. Feeding loads of bait, chucking a method feeder over it. Give it a go and catch units like this one. <laughs>